بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو لرن اباؤٹ دا فزیولوجی اف میموری میموری از دا ایبلٹی ٹو اسٹور نیو انفارمیشن اینڈ دا ایبلٹی ٹو ریفریش دا اسٹورڈ انفارمیشن دیر از آلویز اے کنفیوژن بٹوین دا میموری اینڈ لرننگ لرننگ از دا ایبلٹی ٹو ایکوائر نیو انفارمیشن وائل میموری از دا ایبلٹی ٹو اسٹور دا نیو انفارمیشن میموری از اسٹور تھرو آؤٹ دا برین بٹ four major parts are there which are responsible majorly for the storage of memory for the storage of new information i'm going to write them number one the cerebellum number two the amygdala number three the hippocampus and number four the prefrontal cortex going to discuss each and every one in detail going to the first slide this is the brain this part represents the forebrain this part represents the midbrain while this part represents the hindbrain this is the frontal lobe of the cerebral cortex this is the parietal lobe this is the occipital lobe and this is the temporal lobe coming towards the cerebellum this is the cerebellum this is the part of hind brain this is responsible for the storage of memory regarding the regarding the procedure this is responsible for the storage of procedural memory i am going to write it the cerebellum is responsible for the storage of procedural memory what is procedural memory procedural memory is the memory which has something to do with the procedure which has something to do with the procedure and balance also i am going to show you the example look at this example to play the piano is a type of procedural memory the information regarding the procedure of playing the piano is stored in your cerebellum so cerebellum is responsible for the procedural memory of playing the piano similarly look at this example cycling is the best example of the procedural memory the information regarding cycling is stored in your cerebellum uh, similarly you you may have seen a lot of birds lot of animals are there uh, which maintain their balance uh, by sitting on the twig of trees so this uh, this this is uh, uh, stored in their cerebellum so the cerebellum has maintained the balance and that balance are maintaining the balance or the memory of maintaining the balance is stored in their cerebellum uh, similarly a lot of examples are there which deal with the procedural memory for example the driving for example the swimming for example the typing all of these information are stored in the uh cerebellum in this part of the hind brain so if we remove the cerebellum from an expert driver their driver will no more be a driver after removing the cerebellum he will no more be able to drive the car he will no more be able to drive similarly the acrobat has also a very well developed uh, cerebellum because a lot of memory regarding the balance maintaining and uh, the maintenance of balance has been stored in the cerebellum of the acrobats now coming towards the second part that is the amygdala this is the amygdala and this is located in the temporal lobe in the middle region of the temporal lobe this uh, amygdala is located and this is the almond shaped structure and amygdala is responsible for the storage of a special type of memory that is called fair memory i'm going to write it the fair memory fair memory is the memory regarding the fair regarding the fright regarding the stressful condition regarding the uh, when someone is in fair condition in fright condition in stressful condition this uh, amygdala got active and this by getting active this amygdala the it stored the information regarding the fair regarding that condition i am going to show you an example which will demonstrate uh, the function of amygdala this is mice and this mice is placed 
on the plate this plate is not having any sort of irritation any current or any foot shock etc and this uh, mice is active this mice is not showing any fair response now if we apply the foot shock to the mice this mice will get freezed but during applying the shock to the foot of this mice to the part of this mice what will happen during applying the shock we also apply the bill so this mice get the information of shock and bill at the same time and it save the information of bill or listening to the bill and uh, getting the foot shock in their amygdala so this mice store the information of listening to the bill and foot shock in its amygdala and this mice is showing a freezing response after listening to the bill and applying the shock now if we do not apply any shock after after so many repetition of this procedure or after so many repetition of this uh, experiment uh, this mice is applied with only with only bell after listening to the bell this mice will get freezed uh, though there is no current there is no foot shock still the mice get freezed why the mice get freezed because the information regarding the fare is stored in its amygdala so after listening to this bell this uh, uh, this mice assume that uh, he is in fair condition this mice assume that he is getting the foot shock but there is no foot shock at all still this mice is showing the freezing response why this mice is showing the freezing response because uh, this mice has stored the information of fair regarding the foot shock in its uh, amygdala so after listening to this bill uh, he assume himself in danger in stressful condition so he uh, he showed the freezing response now if we remove the amygdala from this mice and uh, give foot shock time and again time and again give foot shock to this mice and apply the bill also then after applying the bill to this mice he will not uh, show any freezing response because the information regarding the fair cannot be stored in this mice the information can only be stored when there is amygdala in this mice so uh, this is the amygdala and this amygdala is located to our hair uh, this is the frontal plane of the brain and our hair in the uh, temporal lobe in the middle area of temporal lobe this uh, amygdala is located now coming towards the third part that is the hippocampus this lobe shaped structure is the hippocampus hippocampus is very important part of the brain very important part of the memory it store a special type of information or memory that is called the explicit memory explicit memory that is also called declarative memory that is also called special memory the explicit memory special memory or uh, declarative memory is a type of memory which deals with the information regarding the surrounding which deals the information regarding the space which deals the information regarding the events so the hippocampus stored the information regarding special events in the life this part of the brain remain active during the event during uh, during special events for example uh, if you are attending a marriage ceremony, if you, if you are attending the funeral, if you are attending the birthday party, if you are getting a picnic uh, party. Uh, so uh, all of these events are stored in your brain. Uh, similarly, the, uh, the information regarding the surrounding is also stored in this hippocampus. How the information regarding the surrounding is stored? You know a special type of city special type of building you you know a special type of street now so because of the structure of their street because of the structure of that building so all these information regarding the surrounding and space and pathways are stored in your hippocampus i'm going to show you an example this is the simple maze and this maze we put a mice this maze is having multiple pathways uh, if we put some sort of food or hair in this section or in any other section uh, and uh, start teaching this mice how to lead towards this food, how to lead to this food, how to follow this food. 
uh, this mice will go toward this food after teaching this uh, mice how to read this food he will he will have the data regarding the surrounding regarding the pathways or to reach this food how will he reach this food once this uh, once we teach this mice how to reach this food following multiple pathways inside this maze then after uh, reaching this food this mice will store the information regarding the surrounding of this maze regarding the pathways of this maze and uh, once again if we put food uh, in any other part of this maze uh, for example if we put the food over here this mice will be able to learn this mice will be able to read this food because because he is having the information regarding the full maze he is having the full data regarding the information regarding this uh, maze regarding the pathway so he has stored the information regarding the surrounding he, he has stored the information related to the area related to the surrounding related to the pathway in his hippocampus now now if we remove the hippocampus from this mice after removing the hippocampus from this mice this hippocampus uh, removed mice will not be able to lead to any food this uh, uh, mice will not be able to learn any information regarding the simple maze a very simple maze cannot be followed by this mice because this mice will not be able to store any new information regarding the pathways uh, because there is no hippocampus in the mice so the uh, hippocampus is responsible for the storage of information regarding the surrounding regarding the pathways inside the animals inside the human inside the many other birds etc now coming towards the very important part of the memory that is called the prefrontal cortex this is the prefrontal cortex and this prefrontal cortex is located inside the frontal lobe of the cerebral cortex or this is located in the frontal part of the frontal lobe of the cerebral cortex the prefrontal cortex and the prefrontal cortex is responsible for the storage of a special type of memory that is called semantic memory semantic tasks and memory so the semantic tasks and semantic memory is stored inside this prefrontal cortex what is semantic semantic mean anything which is uh, related to the words which is related to the words so what is uh, the semantic task semantic task is the uh, to listen about any word and to give an information about that word is called semantic task what is semantic task for example uh, i have told you that there are four parts of the cerebellum there are four parts of the memory the cerebellum the amygdala hippocampus and prefrontal cortex so if you listen about the cerebellum you also know about the spelling of this cerebellum if someone tell you about the flower if someone tell you about the flower you directly in your mind come f l o w e r s flower so what is from where this word come the memory regarding the words the memory regarding the words of any language the memory regarding the words of the arabic words or the chinese words or the english words or the urdu words or any other words can be stored in your and your prefrontal cortex the prefrontal cortex is responsible for the storage of information regarding the word uh, any uh, any topic which we learn any topic that is uh, um, for example this topic is also regarding the words i have I, i have written a lot of words and all these words have been saved in your have been memorized or saved in your in your free frontal cortex the free frontal cortex is responsible for the storage of semantic memory or semantic task and these tasks are this this memory is regarding the words so these are the four parts of uh, brain which are responsible for the storage of uh, information regarding the regarding the fright regarding the events uh, and surrounding and regarding the words and all of these areas are coordinated by the hippocampus now coming towards the molecular basis of memory uh, if we store any information inside the brain inside the cerebellum inside the hippocampus inside the amygdala or prefrontal cortex we give 
uh, structural basis to that memory and that structural base of memory or that anatomical structure of memory is called what that is called engram engram is the structural the structure inside the brain which stored the information and what is engram and engram is a small part of the uh, of the neuron Engram is the part of the neuron which is responsible for the storage of special information. I'm going to show you in detail. This is the structure of neuron. This neuron may be in any part of the memory of the brain. So uh, this may be in the hippocampus, this may be in amygdala or the prefrontal cortex, etc. Et but uh, how they store the memory? First of all, the information comes through the uh, and for, come in the form of the impulse. Come in the form of impulse, and that impulse uh, will lead to the secretion of neurotransmitter, and that neurotransmitter will be secreted by the neuronal ending, and this neuronal ending comes inside the hippocampus. Let's suppose this is the hippocampus. So uh, this neuronal ending will secrete what will secrete the glutamate towards the synapse. This synapse uh, is having the postsynaptic neuronal ending also. This is the postsynaptic neuronal ending. So this uh, postsynaptic neuronal ending will contain special type of receptors of glutamate receptor and th those receptors are called what? These are called AMPA and NMDA receptors. Two types of receptors AMPA and NMDA receptor. N M D A receptor. So these two types of receptors are glutamate are actually the channels of sodium and calcium. So when the neuronal ending or hair secrete what it secrete the neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter is secreted over hair and this neurotransmitter will combine with the uh, with the with the receptor site over here on this glutamate receptor and NMDA receptor it will lead to the opening of this channel this uh, channel will start the influx of sodium and calcium inside this neuron so the influx of sodium and calcium will lead to the formation of what it will first of all it will create an action potential over here on this neuron Secondly, the influx of calcium and sodium or hair will also lead to the formation of second messenger and that second messenger is CAMP. So the CAMP formation will occur over hair and those CAMP will do what? That will uh, sensitize uh, the glutamate receptors on this uh, postsynaptic neuronal ending. They will increase the sensitivity of these receptors and also increase the number of receptors on the postsynaptic uh, nerve ending. So it will create a condition over here, the neurotransmitter which are secreted in the synaptic lip, that neurotransmitter will combine with some receptor and after uh, detaching from the receptor it will go back towards over here and recycle uh, towards the vesicle and again that will be secreted over here and this uh, cycle will be continued. This uh, cycle and this condition only happen in the memory depositing or memory storing area inside the brain. So the phenomena or the condition will occur over here that is called long term potentiation long-term potentiation for example normally in the neurons inside the brain or inside the uh, peripheral nervous system the impulse or the neurotransmitter when are secreted in the synaptic left that uh, activate the receptor or generate the action potential for a few milliseconds but uh, inside the memory storing area inside the brain the action potential and the impulse and the secretion of neurotransmitter uh, is continued, is continued for long interval, is continued for uh, many hours, from minutes up to hours, and the, and this phenomena is called, this phenomena is called long-term potentiation. Long-term potentiation is the very important phenomena, uh, memory inside the brain, long-term potentiation. So the long-term potentiation uh, means the long-term secretion of uh, what the long-term secretion of the neurotransmitter and the long-term 
generation of action potential over here for uh, for many are so what will it do if uh, the information is very um, uh, important for um, for our mind if the information is very important for us it depends upon the information to information. If the information are very important for us, it will create the action potential for many or and uh, it will consolidate the memory. Consolidation of memory means to convert the memory into solid form. I'm going to show you how it will convert the memory into solid form. Memory into solid form then uh, are to a structural base. If we give a structure to the memory, then that memory is uh, already converted into long-term memory, and that memory cannot be deleted. That memory exists in the brain up to lifetime. So, uh, how it, the second messenger formed over here will be transported towards the cell body. Inside the cell body of this neuron, a special type of protein is there that is called Scrap protein, C R E B protein. Uh, you can uh, call it CAMP response binding protein. CREB, C R E B, CREB protein, or CAMP response binding protein. So, this uh, CAMP response binding protein uh, is very important protein uh, because the with this protein, the CAMP will bind. The CAMP will bind with the CREP protein. So this is called CAMP response, RE for response and B for binding. Then protein is protein. So the by combining the CAMP with the CREP protein, the CREP protein will bind with the, the CREP protein will be here and the CREP protein will bind with the CAMP. After binding with the CAMP, it will form an element that is called CRIB element or CAMP binding protein or CAMP binding element that is called CRIB element. This CRIB element is actually very important. This CRIB element will, uh, CRIB element is actually a combination of protein and the CAMP. So this CRIB element will be transported towards the nucleus. This CRIB element will go inside the nucleus and it will combine with the, it will activate this transcription factor. Uh, so the transcription factor will activate the DNA to for transcription. So the DNA will form what the DNA will form uh, messenger RNA. So the messenger RNA will come out of the nucleus and uh, that messenger RNA will start what start the synthesis of protein. That protein is actually synthesized for the formation of uh, structure to the memory. I'm going to show you. That protein will do what? That protein will be transported uh, towards the periphery of this uh, of, of this neuron. That may be transported towards this side. That may be transported towards this side. It depends upon the memory, or it uh, vary from memory to memory. So, what will happen? Uh, it will. For example, uh, this memory is transported toward, or this protein is transported toward this side. In the previous picture, there was no dendrite over here. So a new dendrite is formed in this one. So this dendrite uh, represent an n-gram. So um, you, you, you can say a small part of this, uh, this dendrite, a small part of, a small section of this dendrite, maybe in gram, or this whole part of, or this whole dendrite may represent an n-gram. So uh, this engram or this newly formed structure represent what? This represent the new memory. This represent the memory which is stored by the the memory which is stored by the neuron which is converted into solid form. So uh, a very mature neuron will contain large number of dendrites. It means that the mature neuron will contain large memory. Now, if we are increasing in age. The, the and we are storing memory from day to day in daily life so what happened the number of dendrites and number of nerve ending uh, is going to increase day by day so why this happened this happened for the storage of memory for the storage of information for the consolidation of memory this is called what this is called consolidation of memory uh, we all types of memory cannot be converted into solid form. All type of memory cannot be consolidated. Only the long-term memory is consolidated. 
uh, once the memory is consolidated once the memory is converted into solid form that memory can be recalled that memory can be recalled and how that memory can be recalled for example this memory is uh, stored in the this area in this area now if we want to recall this memory we will have we will have an impulse towards this this uh, area when uh, we will we, we will get uh, the impulse from this nerve ending and that impulse will goes uh, as action potential toward this uh, engram toward this nerve terminal so if uh, the new if the action potential goes to a special uh, nerve terminal that will uh, that that will show a special a uh, specific uh, memory now, for example this nerve terminal will uh, show a different memory this nerve terminal will show a different memory and this nerve terminal will also show a different memory each and every part of this neuron inside uh, any memory site inside the hippocampus and inside the amygdala or the prefrontal cortex uh, will show a specific memory so that uh, specific part for the uh, for the designation of special memory that is called engram for example this area may be an engram for example this whole area uh, may be an engram for example this small part can be an 